postman pat, postman pat, postman pat, and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman pat, postman pat, postman pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock, ring. Letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really Down at Greendale Village School, they had a model volcano. Just think, children, said Mr. Pringle, of all that rock going bubble, bubble, whoosh under the ground. You'd get your feet hot, said Lucy. No, you wouldn't, said Bill Thompson. You could wear your wellies. It was a long time before wellies were invented, said Mr. Pringle. The volcanoes made our lovely Greendale Hills long before there were any people, never mind wellies. Great holes in the ground, with rock oozing out like toffee. Did you say toffee? said Tom. I like toffee. I said it was like toffee, said Mr. Pringle, because it was all oozy. And it was so long ago that it was even before the dinosaurs came. You can all do a lovely painting tomorrow for open day. But it's home time now. <laughs> Pat was waiting at the gate for Julian. Hello there. Hi, Dad. Time to go home. Come on, Dad, I'm hungry. Bye, Pat. Bye, Pat. Bye, Pat. Bye. <laughs> The next morning, it seemed very quiet in the village. When Pat came to collect the letters. Oh, yes, I certainly will. Did you say it was near taunts and ground? Dear me. Yes, yes, I'll tell them. Bye for now. What was all that about, Mrs. Goggins? Oh, dear. Well, that was P.C. Selby. It seems that there's a great gaping hole in the middle of the road, near Thompson Ground. He says it's big enough to swallow a cow. Oh, I know what that means. Road closed, diversions, cones and bollards all over the place. How does he think I'm going to get through with all these letters and parcels? Talking about holes in the ground, Julian was on about volcanoes and earthquakes last night. Nay, hey, Pat, it's only a hole in the road. Oh, we'll manage somehow. Bye for now. Bye, Pat. I wonder if dinosaurs would get letters. <laughs> and what did dinosaur cats look like? I bet they ate some huge fish, eh, Jess? <laughs> Alf was out on his tractor. Pat stopped for a chat. What do you reckon to this hole in the road, Alf? 
what hole? I've seen that. I've been ploughing since early morning. There's a great hole just outside your farm. PC Selby shut the road off. Oh dear, said I. How am I going to get home? I'd best be off. Bye, bye. Bye. just in case there were any new holes that no one knew about. Oh dear, diversion. So we can't go our usual way. I, I know PC Selby and his diversions. Every time it ends up me going the long way round. Hey up. What's this? Oh no. Not another. And it's going back the other way. What? More diversions? <laughs> They're everywhere. Here we go again. Oh, this is awful. I'm getting dizzy going right and then left, then right again. I should go straight home. Maybe if I went left. But I can't. I could go right here. I've just spotted where we are, Jess. <laughs> We're back where we started. Then Alf came chucking along. Don't follow me, said Pat. I'm lost. If you follow these signs, you just go round in a big circle. Nay, Pat, I can't be bothered with all that, said Alf. I have to get home and get my dinner. Let's shift this clutter out of the way. No problem. That far. Is this what all the fuss is about? said Alf. <laughs> it doesn't look much to me. I've seen bigger, said Pat. A baby one. Now then, now then, what's going on there? Look out, here comes trouble. PC Selby. Come on, lads. You know this road's closed. You must have seen the signs. I'll have to take your names and addresses. Here, can you hold my tea? Don't be daft, Arthur. You've known us ever since we were in short trousers. Never mind that. We have to do it proper. Now then, how do you spell proceeding? Uh, you haven't got a pencil sharpener on you by any chance? Here we are. A nice, fresh cup of tea. Oh, thanks, Dorothy, said Pat. Just what we need. Dorothy, have you got anything to sharpen Arthur's pencil? Hang on, but if you could just hold this. And then, uh, Arthur, pass your pencil to Dorothy. Then if you take these... But I've nothing to sharpen pencils with. I think there are two E's in proceeding. But is it a C or an S? I thought you said... All I did um, is bring the tea. Has anyone seen my notebook? Let's go home, Dot. I think it's going round in circles like my van. Talking about that, you've given me an idea. Now, 
If we made everything go through Alfjord instead, we could probably... Uh... Dandelions everywhere. wonder if there are any holes here. When Pat called on Miss Hubbard, she was acting very oddly, rodding about the garden with a stick. It's very dangerous having holes in one's garden. Oh, morning, Pat. Morning, Miss Hubbard. You've not lost something, have you? Certainly not. I'm just taking precautions. Holes, you know, appearing without warning. P.C. Selby told me all about it. Oh, I wouldn't let it bother you, Miss Hubbard. It's only a small hole in the road. Cheerio. Bye, Pat. Bye. Pat called on Ted Glenn. Hello, Pat. Hello there. There was a parcel for him. Sorry I'm a bit late today, said Pat. It's this blooming hole in the road. I've had to go all round Greendale to get here. Don't worry. Leave it to me. I'll have that hole filled in no time. A bag of cement, a bit of gravel and some tar. That'll sort it out. All leftovers from a job in Pencaster. I knew it'd come in handy one day. Champion, said Pat. ta -da, Pat. Cheerio. Pat was on his way. Having delivered all his letters, it was time to go back to the post office. But he stopped at Thompson Ground to see how things were going. There was a whole new set of signs leading into a field and through Alf's yard, where Ted's lorry was parked. It's like town centre here, said Alf. My poor ends. That's if you can find them, poor things. They'll not lay for a fortnight. Here comes another. Oh, it's Sam. Good morning. See what I mean, Pat? It's terrible. You'll be all right, said Pat, as soon as Ted gets that hole filled in. Come on, slowly as you go. Careful now. Tio! Called Dorothy from the kitchen door. And fresh biscuits straight from the oven. Just what I need. We'll have a sup while that tar sets. Are you coming for your tea, Arthur? Mind the tar, will you? Help! Help! Here, don't let... Come back! Help! But something seemed to be keeping PC Selby. Help! Come back! Help! Did somebody shout help? Said Pat. He's not looking for his notebook, is he? Said Alf. He hasn't gone and trod in it, has he? What are you doing to my nice new tar? Fast setting stuff, that. A new kind, you know. You'll have to take your boots off and leave them in charge, said Pat. Come on, Arthur. Off with your boots. Don't be shy. One, two, and lift. Oops, here, hold on. Time for a bit of farm transport, said Arthur. Oh! Steady on. My boots. How am I going to walk? And you we'll need a new to, warning sign. Stay still and I'll tip you over. Very undignified, this. I'll never live it down. There. Danger. Police boots. Everybody should see that. I hope Dorothy's kept some tea hot. <laughs> Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat.
postman hat, postman hat, postman hat, and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure they'll be knock, bring letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Postman Pat is collecting the post at Garner Bridge Post Office. What's this? A new poster? Garner Hall open to the public? Well, bless me. Mind you, it'll be a lovely show. It's a fine house. Oh, but Pat, said Mrs. Gobbins, just think of all the cars and coaches and the litter. Oh, and Miss Hubbard did ask particular for you to drop in and have a word. I don't know what she wants. Mm, I expect it's something to do with this opening of Garner Hall. I'll not forget. Cheerio. Bye, Pat. Cheerio. All right, Jess. I'm coming. You never know. Miss Hubbard might have some cream for you today. But I hope she doesn't want a hand with her blooming bees. I remember last time. Pat was still wondering what Miss Hubbard could want. No bees about anyway. Come in, Pat. Where are you, Miss Hubbard? In here, Pat. Just come through. There were piles of paper everywhere. Oh, now where has the fellow got to? Goodness me, Miss Hubbard. Hey up, there's a draft. Whoops! Oh, I've made a right mess. Oh, for heaven's sake, man, shut that door. Don't worry, I'll pick these up. Whoops! Sorry. Oh, but don't make the place untidy, Pat. Just put that pile where you can. I wouldn't like to sort this lot out. I'm just getting ready for the grand opening of Garner Hall. The Major has asked me to show people round, and I must find out all about the old times in Greendale. Oh, yes, I saw the poster. Well, I don't know if much has happened in Greendale. No famous battles, no ghosts, nothing like that. Ah, don't be so sure, Pat. You never know what you'll find in some of these old papers. Tell you what, Pat, there's one thing I would like to see. Folks say Granny Dryden has a very old diary that her granddad kept, and he was head butler at Garner Hall a hundred years ago. Now, if you were to ask her, she might just lend it. It's worth a try. I'll ask her when I call with the letters. I feel sure she'll let you have it. Do please ask her. I'll take good care of it. I'll pop in when I finish my letters and let you know how I get on. Oops, I nearly forgot your post. Cheerio. Good man. Bye for now. Pat was on his way. 
His next stop was at Ted Glen. Hello, Ted. What's he doing? Making a right clatter. Ted! Hello, Pat. <laughs> you gave me quite a fright. I didn't hear you come in. Look at this. Just like new. All ready for the grand opening. I know. I've gone a haul. A knight in shining armour. What do you reckon, Pat? I've always fancied trying this stuff on. Well, now's your chance. I'll bring a tin opener next time I call, just in case you get stuck. <laughs> Here's some mail to go with it. Cheerio! Ta-da, Pat! Pat was on his way. His next stop was at Granny Dry Beach. Now then, what, what was it that Miss Hubbard wanted? Yeah. Hello, anybody at home? Oh, Pat, I'm glad to see you. I've just been sorting out some old stuff. There's this diary. Come and have a look. Eee, it takes me back seeing these old pages. Wilfred's very words. Just as he wrote them all that long time ago. I never saw anything like it. Do you think I could borrow it so that Miss Hubbard could make a few notes for when she shows folk around? Well, I can't make it out properly with me glasses, so you might as well take it. Uh, I'll take great care of it. I promise. Bye, Pat. Bye, Granny Dryden. Cheerio. <laughs> it was time for Pat to be getting along to Garner Hall. Miss Hubbard would be waiting for him and the precious diary. Garner Hall at last. Major Forbes was at the door looking out for Pat. Come along, Pat. I see that you've got the diary. Miss Hubbard's waiting for you. Pat, good man, and the diary. Now, let me see. There must be something here. Where do I put this lot? Over there, Ted, near the chimney. Oops, makes a right clutter, this stuff does. Oh, how can I write the history of Garner Hall with this racket going on? Come and sit in the library, Miss Hubbard. You'll find it nice and peaceful in there. Oh, thank you, Major. So kind. Ted seemed to think the suit of armor was a new kind of jigsaw puzzle. Just about my size, I reckon. Mm, let's see. <laughs> I'd better leave you to it, Ted. Bye. Is that you, Pat? Um, I was on my way out. Just about to leave, Miss Hubbard. I want to show you something. Uh, something wrong? Pat, what am I going to do? Look at these diaries. Well, what's wrong with them, Miss Hubbard? Wrong? Wrong, Pat? There's not a thing in them that I can put in my story of Garner Hall. They're just... just... Boring, Pat. Look. Hmm. It was a nice day today. 
Went fishing, caught three trout, <laughs> went to bed early. Well, yes, I see what you mean. Nothing very historical about that. Historical? Oh, Pat, it makes me feel hysterical. Look, I haven't got a single note on my paper, not a thing. Meanwhile, Ted seemed to be having trouble with the armor. Help, Pat! Get me out of here, I'm stuck! Get your tin opener, I, I can't see where... Ah. God. You can't leave me like this. Ooh, boy. Mm. Ooh. Are you there, Pat? This armor's a bit stiff. Ooh. Pat, come and see. There's some monster going straight through the flower beds in a suit of armor. Look. Let's have a look. You're right. A suit of armor. <laughs> and I think I know who's in it. Hmm. Oh, my heck. Oh. Ah. Oh, me back. Where am I? You can't leave me like this. Get me the fire brigade. What's this in front here? Ow! Oh, bloody <laughs> Did you say, Pat, did you say my suit of armor, eh, what? Out here, in the flower beds, parading about? Uh, yes, Major. It was... It should be in the hall. I know, Major, but l look at your flowers. All crushed and spoilt. Badgers, foxes, deer, no stopping the blighters. That's what it is. <laughs> Sounds more like an elephant, Major. The whole herd of them, if you ask me, Pat. Miss Hubbard was waving like mad from the window. I think it's gone back inside. Come along, Major. Which way? This way! Follow me! Charge! Where is he? Dashed if the fellow's disappeared again. I'm sure I heard something in here. But the suit of armor! It's gone! What was that? Sounds as though you've got mice. <laughs> Big metal ones. It came from behind that door. If only I could see where I'm going. Hey, look at this. A door. And a secret passage. Hello, suit of armor. Hello, everybody. Glad to get this helmet off. Got stuck. Couldn't see a thing. It's so dark in here. But what's this? I've found an old book in your secret cupboard, Major. Good fellow. Might be something Miss Hubbard could use. Something for me? Oh, what have you found? Old papers. What luck. Just what we need. Hmm, yes. <laughs> Good gracious. <laughs> Incredible. Just the stuff. And at the last minute, too. Very lucky. You never know what skeletons there might be in an old cupboard. Uh, uh, yes, well, um, time for tea, eh, what? <laughs> Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Postman Pat, 
postman hat, postman hat, and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure they'll be knock, bring letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. It was a warm morning in Greendale. And there were plenty of letters and parcels for Pat to deliver. That's the village just about done. Major Forbes was busy reading his paper. Morning, Major. Morning, Pat. I say, this print gets smaller and smaller. Can't see the half of it. Well, now, Major, I couldn't read a thing without my glasses. It might mean that you need a pair. It's ever so fuzzy and blurred without them. Oh, what a nuisance. I suppose I'll have to pop into Pencaster for an eye test. My Aunt Penny sat on her glasses once, smashed them to bits. <laughs> Very painful, what? Cheerio, Major. What would I do without my glasses? And another for Miss Hubbard. Oh, there you are, Pat. That's all the country letters sorted now. All ready for you. It's warming up now outside. Phew, that's better. Oh, nice. Hello, who's that? Ooh. Ooh, Bayek. Ooh. Catch hold of that corner, Pat. It's a bit... Oops. It's a right weight. Ooh, do Ooh. be careful. Just get it on there. That's it. Push. I hope it's nothing that breaks easily. It went down with a bit of a thump. Nay, it's all right, but I'm glad to get it here all in one piece. Oh, Ted, what a monster. I can't be doing with this on my counter all morning. I rang Pencaster Parcel Office and they said they'd pick it up just as soon as possible. Just look at that time. I'd better be off. Where did I put my hat? And where am I... Um... Uh, uh, look under there, Pat. Here we go. Don't drop it. I can feel something. Oh. Oh. Dear me. Oh, Pat. Are those your glasses? What's left of them? They're not much use now. How am I going to deliver these letters? I can't see to drive, never mind read the addresses. Now, Pat, Ted can take you home in his lorry, and you can get your spare pair of glasses. What spare pair? Oh, Pat, a 
Haven't you got a spare pair? No, I've never broken them before. I've had these for years and years. Well, you'll have to borrow some, Pat. You can try my old ones. They might do. Don't worry, Pat. We can take the letters round in the lorry. I can give you a hand. Well, I certainly won't be able to drive. Here we are. Now, give these a try, Pat. Oh, Ta. Um... <clears throat> well, it's better than nothing. Just a bit fuzzy. Oh, we'll manage somehow. Here we are. Thanks, Mrs. Goggins. Bye for now. Oh, dear. Do oh, be dear. careful, Pat. Oh, goodness me. Oh. Don't worry. I'll keep an eye on him. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mrs. Goggins. You can see that he needs looking after. Cheerio. Bye, Pat. Oops. <laughs> Dr. Gilbertson was out doing her shopping. Hmm. <laughs> ah, who's this? Um, hello. Getting hot, isn't it? Um, now then, Dorothy. Uh, I've got lots of letters for you. Hmm. <laughs> um, this looks like one of yours. Here we are. Have a good read. But that's not Dorothy. Oh, uh, ooh, ooh. Are you feeling ill, Pat? I'm sorry, Doctor. It's my glasses, squashed flat under a parcel. <laughs> they don't look squashed to me. These are your letters, Doctor. What on earth is going on? Better be on our way with the letters. The next stop was at the church. I think this lot has got all modelled. Tell you what, Pat, we can let the tailgate down. And we'll have a good place to sort them out. I'll just deliver this lot whilst you sort the rest. Uh, are you sure you've got all the Reverend's letters? I'd know them with my eyes shut. Oops, what's this? Good Lord, deliver us. Um, you are Pat, aren't you? Sorry, Pat. I've got the wrong glasses on. I know just how you feel, Reverend. I've got Mrs. Goggins' old glasses on. Did you say? Yes, but it's a long story. Have some letters. Better be on my way, Reverend. Cheerio. But, Pat! This is for the Reverend, Pat. I think you've got them muddled again. Pat, these are not for me at all. They're a bit fuzzy, but I do believe it says Miss Hubbard on this one. You'll have to excuse him, Reverend. You see, his glasses were squashed flat. They look all right to me. It's a long story. And I think it'll be best if you read out all the addresses for me from now on, Ted. No problem. I wish I could help. But you see, my proper glasses... lost them somewhere. It's nice of you to offer to help. Thanks, Reverend. And cheerio. <sighs> I wonder where I've put them. Bye, Pat. Off they went. Here we are, Thompson Ground.
There's Alf's catalogue. Now you can't go wrong with that. Alf can't be far away. Anybody in? Ooh. I wish Alf... Ouch! Wouldn't leave this... For me to fall in. This looks more like it. A nice big letterbox, just the job. Catalog away. Did you find Alf then? Um, he wasn't about. I just popped it in their new letterbox. New letterbox? You haven't got a new letterbox. See for yourself. Show me. Here we are. Didn't I tell you? A new letterbox. <laughs> An old barn door with a missing plank, more like. Locked up as well. Now then, how are we going to get it back? Hang on, I'll get someone to help us. Let's have a look around. If only I could see properly. Ouch! Where does this go? I could get in through the window. Anybody there? Anybody in? Ooh! Ouch! <laughs> what happened? Pat, where are you? Ted! Ooh, it's dark in here. Where's Ted? You all right, bud? Hello, Ted! Having a nice talk to my band door? Hello, Alf. Nay, nay. I'm talking to Pat. He's inside. Well, how's he got in there? It's all locked up. I don't know if I've got the key. Ted! Uh, let's see. You look a right mess, Pat. Here's your catalogue, Alf. Delivered safe and sound. Oh, Ted and Pat, back at last. I've been ringing round everywhere trying to track you down. There's nothing else gone wrong, has there? Oh, no, Pat. It's just that... After you'd gone, I found these. They look awfully like yours. They must have slipped down behind the stamp book. That huge parcel must have given them a push. Magic. I can see again. Oh, that's lovely. They must be mine. Thank you, Mrs Goggins. Hang on. We saw them all smashed up. No, we didn't. There must have been another pair of glasses on the counter. Whose could they be? Well, the Reverend came in before you this morning, and he must have left his glasses here. He didn't mind about his glasses being broken. Said he needed a new pair anyway. Well, I never. I wonder if I need glasses. The post would never have got through without you. Thanks, Ted. Back to the workshop. Cheerio. <laughs> Cheerio. Bye, Ted. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat.
postman Pat, postman Pat, postman Pat, and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, postman Pat, postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock, ring. Letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really There was a touch of spring in the air in Greendale. Pat was on his way. A lovely scent of blossom wafted in at his open window. There wasn't much post today, so he had time to stop. Ooh, isn't it grand? Come on, Jess. Stretch your paws. Well, look who's here. Morning, Miss Hubbard. Oh, morning, Pat. Just the day for a bit of painting. Pat, my canvas, quick, catch it. I'll get it. Well caught, Hedge. Quite a lively picture this'll be. Here we are, Miss Hubbard. All safe. Oh, thank you, Pat. This is a most important canvas for the Ghana Bridge Art Show. The Pencaster Gazette's offering a prize. A very big prize, I believe. Just think of that. Well, I never saw that. I've been too busy sorting out letters to read the paper. Ah, oh, here we go. Hmm. Not a bad start. Well, uh, hmm, is it? I mean, all that yellow. It fair makes you squint. Now then, Pat, what do you think of that? Hmm. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I think the wind's trying to paint you. Oh, it's no good, Pat. I'll have to go home and paint a pot of flowers on the kitchen table. <laughs> Next day, Pat was out in his van again. There was a parcel for Ted. Morning, Ted. Morning, Pat. I hope you've got a parcel for me. I have, and it looks like something special. Special? <laughs> I should think so. Uh, it's a thing of me what's it for this doolally gadget I'm making for the Pencaster art show. Hmm. Well, I wouldn't mind having a go, but I don't think I could make a doolally what's it. Well, there's all sorts of things you could try. What about a spot of painting? I've plenty of tins with a bit left in. I'd be glad to get them used up. I was watching Miss Hubbard yesterday. It looks a bit messy, especially when the wind gets up. What you want is a nice lump of clay. That sounds more my style. But where could I get such a thing as a lump of clay? 
I've got a tin of some special stuff. They sent it for me to try out. It's like clay. I haven't got time to bother with it. You're welcome to try if you like. I'll have a go. Here you are. Plenty there. Just read the instructions. Thanks, Ted. But what's this thing you're making? What does it do? Now then, don't tell anybody, Pat. It's to be a secret until the show opens. <laughs> They've never seen anything like this. It all works with the wind, you see. That's what this fan's here for. What? Uh, <clears throat> I'd better be off. I've had enough wind today to last me for a long time. Cheerio. Bye, Pat. What about a clay mouse, Jess? That might do. <laughs> At Greendale Post Office. What's this business about? Everybody was talking. Look with the link. Hello there. Morning, Pat. Morning, Pat. Morning, Major. About the art show. How wonderful to have an art show in our community. Last time I did any painting, what? Painted the fence all round the barracks. <laughs> Made a bit of a mess of it. When I was a girl, I was a wonder at needlework, embroidery, all that sort of thing. I can't hold a brush properly now. It's these rheumatics, you know. Oh, yes, I'm sure. I, I just have to sort out... These letters. It was sixty Julian has years some nice ago. Stuff. Come, Mickle. When I was on the I remember that. What's the big statue of it? I was losing my numbers. They want to touch me. Quiet, everybody. Now, look, folks. I have these letters to sort out. And if you want any advice, you'd best go have a word with Mr. Pringle down at the school. Follow me. I wonder if he would accept the Mind the step. small model I have. Painting by These numbers. Were cushions. Cross stitching. A bit faded by now. Hello, Mrs. Goggins. Do you know? If it's about that blessed poster and the art show, no, Pat, I don't. The whole of Greendale's all a buzz about it, and I'm tired of answering silly questions. Besides, there's a deal of posts come in, so there'll be no time for chatting. Thanks, Mrs. Goggins. Bye, Pat. I'm thinking of having a go at something. Just wait and see. It was a quiet evening for Pat. Sarah was at the WI. Julian was doing his homework. Pat had a look at the Pencaster Gazette. Then he remembered. Now then, uh, what shall I make? First job, get it out of the tin. Uh, what does it say? I wish Ted hadn't spilt paint on it. Keep warm and mix a small amount of water. I can't see the rest. Never mind. Hey up! Oh dear! Ooh, it's... it's alive! Help! More like glue than clay. Oops! Ooh! My goodness! Ooh, I'd better get a move on. Oh dear. Get off! The next morning, Pat phoned Ted. Hello. Hello, Ted. Hey, old Pat. How you doing? I had a spot of bother with that clay stuff you gave me. Took me till bedtime to clean it up. What did you make? <laughs> a mess, that's what I made, Ted. Nothing else. You should have heard what Sarah said when she came home. 
You'll have to follow the instructions, Pat. I'll see if I can get a leaflet about it. I know I've got one somewhere. Pat just had to have another try. It's beginning to look like... something familiar. Ah, <laughs> Jess was getting fidgety. At last, the day of the art show came. On the way to George Lancaster's, Pat's van was making some very peculiar noises. George heard the noise and came to have a look. Morning, George. What's wrong, Pat? Ooh, I don't know. She just conked out. Let's have a look. I know a thing or two about motors. Sam Waldron arrived. Hi, Sam. Hello, Pat. Anything wrong? Eh, uh, the main manifold to the exhaust. Hmm. I suppose it'll do. This distributor looks icky. Hey, Pat. These plugs are mucky. Oh? Let's have a shifty. There's nothing wrong with the van, Pat. It's just that it won't run on fresh air. <laughs> You're out of petrol. Oh, what a noodle I am. And I'll miss the art show. They're picking the winner this afternoon. Here you are. I can spare you a drop. Enough to get you down to the village anyway. Thanks, Sam. Bye. Cheerio, bye. The van went much better with petrol in it. <laughs> but not for long. Oh dear. No. Oh, come on, Jess. We'll have to walk the rest of the way. Pat was out of puff when he got to the school. There was no sign of the judge. Hello, everybody. Hello, Pat. Hello, Pat. Am I too late? Ah, oh, hello, Pat. Ah, oh, there's Sarah. Hello, there. Pat, over here. She was looking after Pat's model of Jess. Someone had stuck a notice on it. Hello, Sarah. What's this? Special award, Greendale Prize. It's a special prize, Pat. Something about your model saving the show. I didn't think my model was... Hang on. There's something missing. His tail. His tail's missing. I gave him a nice bushy tail. Um... But Hello, Ted. Could you spare a minute? Is there a flood? There was a leak. Um, you see that pipe? That's a nice lump of clay wrapped round the pipe. That's Jesse's tail. The cold water makes the clay go hard, so it's just the thing to stop a leak. Without that, we would have had to close the show down. I think Jess deserves first prize. After all, he did help to stop a flood. He's a first prize cat, is our Jess. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. 